Well, that was an ending of a basketball game. Also, I will acknowledge that I said the Mavs can't beat the Suns and then they won the last game. So that game four will be very interesting, as well as the Heat and the Sixers. Anyway, Marcus Smart with the greatest missed free throw of all time. And man, like 0.1 seconds, the ball's in Horford's hands. He wasn't able to get the tip in. There's other things to talk about in this game, of course, but oh God, that was gut-wrenching. As a Celtics fan, this series is, it's officially gotten to that place. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, where do I go from there? So I felt like the, uh, the adjustments, the first big adjustments in this series came from the Bucks, right? Started the game, not with the three big guy lineup. And, uh, also they did not, uh, trap or play their bigs at the level of the screen as much. Bobby Portis did it sometimes, but especially with Brooke, it was more so dropping and, having the guard fight around the screen, which resulted in uh, Tatum taking a good amount of pull-ups, but with Drew or Wesley Matthews fighting around it, getting a good contest on him, you could see a couple times where he was sort of looking back to see if they were right there. Like, he was just uncomfortable going against the drop, which is kind of weird, because sometimes it was like, oh, that's a pull-up jumper, but based on the first two games where they were trapping and allowed the Celtics to get the swing offense going a little bit more, it certainly threw a, something at the Celtics' offense, and specifically Tatum had a tougher time adjusting. With that said, they almost stole this one off of... Um, I'll get to Giannis, don't worry. They almost stole it off of you know, Jalen in transition, Jalen hitting that like one pretty ridiculous three in the left, or I guess the right wing over... I don't remember who it was, but it was a deep three early in a possession. Horford couldn't miss a jumper all night. He had that one like fake handoff to Tatum, which resulted in a wide open 15 footer or so for him he had that one hook shot over Giannis so they nearly stole the thing but on the other end I mean look Giannis he had 40 something points whatever it was exactly and uh, the Celtics gave him a, a mismatch a lot in this game not every time you know sometimes they're dropping on those screens and late it resulted in one of those Pat Connaughton corner threes because Drew had a little bit of space and he kicked it to him in the corner but uh yeah man I mean the amount of plays where Giannis got a switch onto Jalen, busted out a spin move on him, switch onto Time Lord, drew a foul or whatever. I remember in the first half, like late first half, I think it was, maybe early third, got a switch onto Tatum, backed him down, drop step. That's a dunk on top of just the amount of times where he was just Giannis in transition. I mean, we all knew that the Celtics were not going to keep him to the shooting splits he had in the first two games, even if they did play him perfectly and packed the paint as much as possible and, and all that. And, well, this is what can happen, right? And then Drew is also just taking it himself sometimes, you know? I mean, he had a turnaround jumper over Tatum. Granted, he tried it again, and then Tatum blocked his turnaround, but that was a tough shot. He had a pull-up in transition where nobody really picked him up from around the free-throw line. He had a switch onto Jalen. Maybe it was a switch. There was a screenplay initially. I remember that. And he just hit, like, a step back over him on the baseline. This is how it goes when really good teams face in the playoffs, man. It can come down to just... A few plays. You can pick out any little, I don't know, 5 0 run or something in this game, and that could have swung the whole thing. Um, to talk about Tatum a little bit, because I think that's the big adjustment now for the Celtics is how can they get him going? I mean, look, if they're going to keep playing the drop, and this is the thing, right? Now I've got no clue. They played him more aggressively the first two games, specifically with Lopez. Again, Portis played higher up on screens in this one, which did result in the Celtics getting like corner threes and Jalen beat him on a layup one time. But anyway. I don't know what they're going to do now with Brooke on screens, but if it's a drop, well, actually the first thing is you try to have Tatum score not just in those situations. The obvious things are down screens. There's having him screen. That's something that's been talked about a lot in these playoffs. Not to say that he's not screening in these games. I mean, hell, they ran a Tatum-Jalen screen on that very last play before the Marcus uh, free throws. They ran it baseline before the next part of the play was where Marcus and Jalen were involved in an action. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Tatum screens. You can also hope that Tatum just makes some of those pull-ups against the drop. You can hope that he'll take a couple of dribbles in and either look to draw contact or sort of go around the paint, like force Brooke to stick with him for a second, and then that might be able to open up a cut for somebody else. You could change the location of the screen, you know, try it on the wing or whatever. You could have smaller dudes screen for Tatum. The thing there is the Bucks might just switch that, but hey, it could result in a mismatch. Granted, Drew and uh, Matthew specifically, they're pretty tough. You know, there was one time where 
Tatum had to take a turnaround that you didn't really love because Wesley Matthews, he's just a strong dude. He's tough to move down there, you know? So that is the big thing for the Celtics moving forward now is just how do you get Tatum some better looks? But also we, we ha- we'll have to see how the Bucks are guarding him, specifically with Lopez around screens because they, they switched it up in this one and Tatum was like, what do I do now? As far as guarding Giannis, I mean, there's a few options. You know, they can keep on switching and then get better at when you bring the help. They can look to hedge those screens with the guy that Giannis is attempting to go at and hope that the guy who was originally on him can get back to him. But that's a lot of moving bodies. It's not impossible to do that, but it's difficult. I mean, really what you hope for is that the Bucks' offense just has one of their bad moments where they suddenly just stop doing anything in the half court. And then you can just hope for that single coverage stuff that happened in game two. But I think at this point, the Bucks are all in on Giannis is either screening or he's getting a screen from somebody. 